these are the telltale signs that you need to look for when it's time to change your tyres. The first one is crack tyres. So that largely is going to be a near the rim of the tyre. It's normally caused actually by running too low pressures for too long, by leaving your bike standing with, too, with the tyres not fully inflated, hanging it on the wall. In some hot countries, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere with loads of light, loads of heat, that can also damage it. But it's mainly down to, um, down to pressures. The problem with that is that it can cause um, punctures. If you've, if you've got it too low, your rim is going to potentially get damaged on the floor. If you hit something, um, your ride isn't going to be as great or as secure. The knobs on a tyre perform two different things. You, if you look at a mountain bike tyre, generally you've got a, so the middle stretch of the tyre. Those knobs reflect um, braking, they, that's what they impact on. They also impact on rolling resistance. Um, the knobs on the side of the tyre, they relate to uh, grip and cornering. So when we look at how worn they are, there are two areas that we need to think about. The first one is the, the knobs going down the centre. If they are really worn, you're not going to have any grip, you're not going to brake properly. If they're worn on the sides, then you're going to be um, at risk of when you're cornering, your front wheel will wash out, your rear wheel will wash out. That's when you end up asleep in the dirt and it's uncomfortable and it's not great. The way tyres, especially winter tyres, are made, the, the knobs on the side tend to be quite soft, so they will wear more. If that's going, then generally the likelihood is that the rest of the wear and the tread and so on is going to be going as well. Bulges and blisters are literally exactly the same as the skin. The skin on your body is like the skin on your tyre. A tyre is made up of a load of layers. If you get air or whatever forming within those layers, it's a malfunction basically and it's going to affect the way the tyre works. It makes it more prone to actually falling apart, to blow out. Um, it's more prone to punctures because it, it's just an inherent fault essentially. Sometimes it might be a warranty, sometimes it's just what's happened with age and use over time. Tubeless tyres are our best friend. They have been brilliant. They've revolutionised riding. You can ride them at a lower pressure. They seal up when you get a number of small problems or sort of small punctures in them. Once you start getting the slightly bigger punctures, then you bring in the puncture plugs. And again, that's just been fantastic. You don't have to change your tyre, you don't have to change an inner tube, you keep on riding. But you can't do it indefinitely. There's, there comes a point where actually, if you've got more than, you're unlucky, you've got more than maybe two, three puncture plugs in a tyre, then it's time to definitely think about changing it. Maybe keep it as a backup, but it's, it's A, those, those, sort of, those weak points are going to be prone to more punctures, but it's also going to affect the way the tyre the rolls and grips and brakes, and you don't want to be relying on that when you're coming downhill. When you're first looking at tyres, it's really difficult to choose. There is a vast array of tyres. Everyone is going to have a personal preference. They're going to say, this is great, that's great. Until you actually start riding them yourself, you're not going to know what you really like. So the best place to start is to have a look at the website, go through, read up the blurb. It's really good. It does tell you and give you ideas and gives you combos of to, to try. But essentially what you're looking for is a grippy front tyre, a faster running back tyre. The way to recognise that is that the front tyre will have more pronounced knobs all over it. It may, for a winter tyre, there will be more space between them than a summer tyre, but it's going to look meaty. A faster rolling rear tyre will probably still have sidewall knobs that are quite pronounced so that when you're cornering, you've, you've got that support but the front, the middle section, will have far less gap between it, it'll be lower profile, and it's just essentially there to spit out and get rid of, sort of, get rid of the ground and just create that traction, essentially. The wrong tyre combo, essentially, you are, unless you are an absolute magician on a bike, you are likely to slide out, you're likely to crash more, you're going to lose your confidence, you're likely to injure yourself, break bits of the bike. 
it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. So have a think about where you predominantly ride. Have a look at the terrain. Talk to your mates, see what they ride and what they find works. And because people will talk forever about their tire combos. So if you were only investing in one new tire, I would recommend getting something sensible, something strong for the front. So it's worth investing and thinking about where you're spending your money and what you're looking for.